Yeah. Hi everyone, this is CBGS Me. It's me, Leon, and today we bring you a video on our thoughts about mm. Kai-Fi Vanguard Overdress, which was announced just last Tuesday uh, on the Bushiro live stream. And here we are finally giving you our thoughts on the entire uh, new season. And since tomorrow, Doctor O will be giving another live stream to be more to be more elaborate on what is to come for the new season. Aside from the new anime, which will be done by Clamp Studio, as well as uh, what's that, the Kenima Citrus, which done made in the abyss, as well as Rising of Shield Hero. So the entire season will be taken in a much more serious tone, at least from what the trailer has shown us so far. And it looks pretty dark, and hopefully nothing too grim happens. And I really hope it doesn't, even uh, because it's still a card children's card game anime at the end of the day. But we'll see, we'll see from there. Plus, we are also getting very cheap start decks going at about 5 SGD to 7 SGD because it's roughly about 300 uh, from 333 yen. Uh, Singapore, after your import and GST, all that stuff, it usually be around that kind of price. So, for new players to get in much more easily, and from what I hear, is that each of these decks will also have four copies of everything that you need to start. So, that makes life much more easier for players to just hop in and uh, do a pick and play sort of thing. Most importantly, it is not a reboot. So we are getting new cards and this is a step forward, uh, especially with the story continuing of where after Cardfight Vanguard G, Z uh, saga of the tri Tree season. And so this place takes place after Gizeh is defeated and Messiah went to sleep. So 3000 years later, uh, because of Messiah going to sleep, there is no more God. So Kray basically went into chaos and nations, things happen to them and then they are reformed into new nations so the ones that we used to l love and know has now taken a new name except one or two of them are basically still the same uh, so far as far as I know there's only one that's still the same here are the nations that basically has a uh, change so Oops. so here is what we have right now uh, the United Century has been known as Cater Century then the Dragon Empire stays Dragon Empire the Dark Zone has become Dark State after being unified by a hero from the Gear Chronicle, which we assume that is a Chrono Jet. And then the Zoo and Mega Latika has uh, joined forces, and they were under guidance of a great sage. By the, uh, and now the country, the nation is now known as uh, Stonsia. Is that how you pronounce it? Stonsia. Yeah, Stosia is that's how you pronounce it. And then the last nation, which will be Bulbara Triangle, uh, is currently known as Lyrical Mosterio which is uh, kind of special because they are their own nation and they are not formed up with Zoo and Megalandica in this case um, I wonder why and this is important because we are no longer building our decks based on clans but instead we are going by nations so we will be looking at instead of the usual 24 uh, boosting we are only looking at 5 nations and this also brings forward a lot of very interesting builds that is to come since now they don't have to I deal with all 24 clans for the entire year and some of us don't even get stuff for a while even though it's once a year and once a year of weird boosting it's not very good for a lot of things especially for card games in general so with this in mind we also have three upcoming formats that have been introduced to us which will be our D standard which is the new standard that will be replacing B standard and then B standard now pushed to B premium and lastly premium so what's the diff is that D format basically the, the D standard basically replaces the cards with the bottom logo from the B to the D so uh, you replace us with the D and you can only play cards with that uh, with that symbol and of course the, with the D cards also means their clan has changed into nations instead so you only can play your decks purely built on nations as well as the D symbol cards for V premium is basically everything in V just as you are right now playing so no strikes no nothing so with the V icon you can play in the V premium uh, as and you get about uh, boost twice a year based on the announcement as for premium is free for all that is, that is self-explanatory so uh, with this in mind can be quite intimidating for a lot of new players uh, especially those who are coming in and then they're like premium they go and find a deck that's premium that's prize and V of course it is also 
quite intimidating for uh, advanced pl- for older players such as ourselves, including content creators, because t- handling two formats is already very straining for a lot of us. Actually, people like uh, myself, I have other things to do. This is also why I don't really come to play that much, uh, but I come out when I can. And that's with this new format going or juggling around, it's already quite difficult with all the editing that we are doing as it is. And then now there is one more format. Although we are looking forward to it, but when it comes down to production-wise, uh, it will be quite hard to keep up as we now that we have all these things going on. And um, well, we'll do what we can. And it's worth noting that uh, some people do feel that having suddenly three formats is also a bad idea. To them, they feel that bad idea. To at least to me, although it's uh, gonna be quite tight on the schedule, but at least this kind of ser- to me this kind of serves as a way for uh, them to slowly blend in. The format because one the thing about people who has a only only came into V they don't have proper cards that is given to them at the start um, for that will help them in premium because in premium you have to deal with strikes some people may feel that the strike may not make a difference because some of the V decks are already have powers beyond strikes and however those who can utilize both strikes and the V cards can be a force to be reckoned with like for example easily if you put a uh, blade master or the blade master may not be the running meta uh, but it is one of those decks that excels really great when you have the combination of both the v blade master cards as well as a uh, zgenberg and things like that you have open to options while players who purely came into v does not have that and they will not feel very welcome when they go into premium directly so the splitting of between new standard to v premium and then to premium is a kind of a necessary evil uh, and we do feel that we appreciate that um for sure is doing that and hopefully they do reprint some of the staple g zone cards uh, to help players move forward into the game so that they don't get left out and at least we are on par to some level or at least print new set of G Guardians that will be hopefully better than what we have received in the earlier days uh, which I truly believe that will be the case um, but that would most certainly help them to build their 16 G zone deck so moving on to new cards and boosting and rarity one of the things that was also announced which is very important is that they are finally removing the VRs from the equation. So this also means that we only have triple R's as the only highest rarity we had to deal with in our deck in deck building. Uh, although there is still the holo res and some of the cards will get holo res and then there's also the DSR which will be the holo. Uh, well, I mean not holo, as in like there's new secret rarity to the set, but however they are just alternate art or alternate versions of the existing triple rest or so to speak if that's what i'm getting from them uh we don't have to deal with the fact that the vr is like the what it used to be the vr or, or the zr all these things all those nonsensical are being a staple to your deck and those things is annoying because vr being what it is a card easily costs about 15 dollars or more 20 for a for one piece and you need four of those things it's not even a question sometimes and if you don't have it basically your deck is dead for the most part if you don't have any of this VR your deck is dead so one of the things that really made back then the Vanguard in the, uh, great in the first place uh, back then was that you have many ways to build a deck I mean I have seen Rohan Grimm playing a deck and people was playing all kinds of weird builds and it was great because at the time great tree uh, re- normal rare great trees and common great trees sometimes has interesting roles they they play very good support and they also can be going the most some of them can go into the vanguard circle and then they hold their grounds fairly well however when we started going into uh vr uh we started getting into standard and vr has started to become quite nauseating uh, also one of the reasons why we slowed down on our production was because uh, one we are already only receiving a boost once a year and then we are being locked behind this VR rarity issue where if we don't get this VR we cannot do anything that is uh, and 
because being standard being standard, not a lot of flexibility in terms of deck building, at least in our opinion, uh, there isn't always to try out new ways to play a card because the filler cards are really just fillers, you don't end up really using them because they will always be a stronger alternative. And the double R's and the triple R's only serve as purely supporting cards for the most part. Rarely uh, them as the main vanguard is quite rare. So very rarely a triple R grade 3 will be printed good enough to, to help hold the line in the case that you don't draw a VR. But most of the time you do need the VR to play a deck properly for the most part. But of course nowadays you can see, to see that they have been trying to help and improve that that the Trubar can stand on their own a little bit here and there but even with that it's kind of late. But now with this upcoming rarity uh, changes, I hope that this also helps the secondary market to let people have better, ex easier access to cards and not having things jacked up all because the VR was the most important thing in the deck. And I really appreciate Bushio did what they did. Moving on to the right deck, the right deck themselves, uh, this is an interesting con this is a very interesting concept and it it's also strictly only for the D format, the D standard. You cannot use this uh support when you are playing in V premium or in premium for very obvious reasons. Uh, I don't think I need to go into too much detail on that. So basically what is a right deck is that a right deck comes from your main deck and you take out four cards from your main deck, consisting of grade 0, 1, 2 and 3. So this thing will be set aside and you can use a different sleeve for these things, okay? They will be set aside and during your right phase, you can discard a card from your hand and then you write one card from the right deck. And if the right deck, if the cards from the right deck at any point that you use, uh, at any point gets discarded, like let's say Soul Blasted or something, uh, it gets, basically it, re it removes from the field, it goes back into the right deck. So uh, why I say this is a good mechanic is that one, you will never restrict. You will finally never restrict. It one of the worst things about playing in Vanguard sometimes is that you you a fight and you don't even know whether your deck is working because you're just misgrading consistently and we and with, among ourselves, among friends, we actually sometimes we don't care and we just uh like you know what? Let's just just take your grades, bro. We we don't care. So we just want you. We just want our friends to have fun and actually play the game at their maximum capacity. If you draw your triggers. That's part of the game. If you draw four of grade twos, that's part of the game. But when it comes to misgrade, even though it's part of the game, but it's also kind of like the MTG equivalent of mana block. When your hand is four, uh, if, if is your hand uh, basically no mana, you have all of these things in your hand, you can't cast it. So it's the same thing. And Vanguard riding up is too crucial. And during tournaments, especially, and if you lose by misgrading, that is just bad. They just it just kills your feeling for the entire day. And I am glad that this is a thing and uh, I can't wait to try it out actually. Finally is the over trigger. The over trigger is one of the mechanics. Uh, some people are screaming. I have seen friends on my feed as like, oh 100 million power and uh, it's kinda intimidating at first but I rest assure you it's not as bad as one thing for now. Just for now. Alright. Okay, so 100 million power is one thing. So uh, how it works is that each deck can only run one over triggers and each nation has its unique over triggers. And uh, when you attack, you get the 100 million power and then you also get a unique skill based on the nation that you are using of that over trigger. And then when you are taking as a damage trigger, it will nullify all damages from that damage source. So let's say for example, like a, your opponent hit you for 6 crits. For some reason, somehow, like uh, Messianic hits you for like for that, and you check that as your damage, and it will nullify all damage that is to come from that point onwards. Uh, I not uh, they have to elaborate the rulings. I hope they do it tomorrow uh, during the stream about what if I take it somewhere in the middle. Do I nullify everything? Uh, because they haven't fully gone to deal. But at least from what I understand is that if let's say you check it uh, somewhere in the middle. Um, it will nullify everything from that point onwards. At least from my understanding, because uh, it feels like a very, it feels very strange. But it could also work like a bit like a uh, wise wash, where if you hit a climax, it will just nullify the damage through and through. It could be that based on the text, but we will have to see. Uh, this is just our speculation. Uh, either way, when a card is checked into the damage or is checked into the uh, attack drive, it basically it goes out of game after that. But if, let's say if you were to. Uh, if you were to draw the over trigger, you basically will not have 
a problem about it going out of play because it will be in your hand and it has a 50,000 shield power and you can use it. I think after that when you're done, then you will just uh, basically go out of play as you would. The idea is that they don't want it to stick around for too long and um, things can happen. You know, back out, uh, Players from any card game will find a way to abuse whatever they can get their hands on. And I think this is fair and it's very sacky as some players will say it because it's only one copy in the deck and we are dealing with a odd of uh, 40 cards. Why I say 40 is because First, your first Vanguard is 1, and then you take out 4 cards from the deck for your right deck, and then you draw 5 cards around your hand. And that's not counting your initial right, your initial draw. So, just basing on that alone, you are already limiting, you're already having a chance of 40 cards out of 1. And that being the first card that's gonna show up on your damage check or in your hand or whatsoever is equally as bad. I have it got into so many situations where I only play one copy and then one copy always comes into my hand and I wouldn't be surprised if Overtrigger does the same thing to me again or to anybody else in this case uh, I'll flip I'll truly flip and the thing is also if my if I'm attacking for the last attack and I check that Overtrigger and then yay it's like winning a lorry everyone's gonna celebrate and then only your opponent to check it the same thing and like oh But it'll be funny. It'll be definitely funny when it, especially when it's all all the high top and then the bam. And then gone. Alright. But we're really looking forward to see that happening on video. And that is all for today. Uh, since there will be more information that we will tomorrow on the live stream, so uh, we will give a more thoughts about it afterwards and we'll release another video simple like this. And this is also probably the first and this is the first time we we did it a overview video or something like this. Usually it's a grind my rear guard, a guy my a grind my gear video or something else or a what happened video, but this isn't that. This is ultimately our thoughts about it. We wanna let it out before the stream tomorrow. And then we can put a separate input up before this gets all too draggy. Thank you so much for watching and if you do like what you see here today and you would like to get uh, more information about Overdress soon, uh, do remember to subscribe to us and ring the ding the bell to get notified on our latest videos and do subscribe to all our social which is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well as join us on Discord, we'll be there on most nights and some of the more enthusiastic players will also be there to talk about any kind of games if you are battle three players, playing out players, doesn't matter, just come on in and join us, alright? So uh, with that said, thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!